Directly measuring the voltage of the secondary ignition with a meter is not an option. These high voltages will damage any scope or meter connected directly to the coil outputs. To capture a secondary ignition waveform requires the use of a capacitive probe. Non-contact capacitive sensors measure the changes in an electrical property called capacitance. Capacitance describes how two conductive objects with a space between them respond to a voltage difference applied to them. A voltage applied to the conductors creates an electric field between them, causing positive and negative charges to collect on the probe. This type of probe can be either the traditional clamp over an ignition wire or a paddle which makes contact with the surface of the coil or wire. Most clamp or paddle probes have a conversion factor of 1000 to 1 volts. This means that 1 volt at the scope input equals 1000 volts or 1 kilovolt in the secondary. Some clamps or probes may also have an attenuator, 10 or 20 to 1. Make sure you read the instructions to set up your scope. Some scopes will convert the voltage scale to kilovolts when the ignition probe is selected. When you are trying to set up a scope to measure secondary ignition waveforms, the goal is to capture the ignition event from when power is applied to the coil to the point where the coil oscillates with the remaining energy. This can happen in 6 to 10 milliseconds. One millisecond per division is typically the optimal time base depending on the size of your screen and the type of ignition system. A healthy coil and ignition system generates 3 to 4 kilovolts at idle. As load and engine speed increase, the KV spike will increase. Some systems can generate more than 50 KV under certain conditions. You may need to adjust your voltage scales to capture the total output of the spike, but you can also adjust the voltage scale to capture more nuances in the spark line. On most scopes, the trigger should be set to auto or single with an increasing slope. With some scopes, you will be able to use an auto or repeat trigger setting to stabilize the waveform. There are also options to offset or delay the trigger to fit the entire event on one screen. As for sample rate, more is better. The more samples means that it is possible to have more detail for the secondary ignition waveform. If the scope is not fast enough or other channels are being utilized, the sample rate might not be fast enough to capture the spike or the details of the spark line. A secondary ignition waveform can be broken down into three parts. First, the area of the waveform that shows dwell, where the secondary of the coil is saturated with energy from the primary. Second, the spike shows the initial start of the spark between the electrodes. Third, the burn time is the area of the wave where the spark is burning between the electrodes and eventually stops. The first part of the waveform is the charging of the secondary coil by the primary. This is where the energy of the primary saturates the secondary coil. There will be an initial sharp voltage drop followed by a sine wave, that is a coil oscillation. This oscillation is the module turning on power to the coil. As the secondary becomes saturated, the line will slowly go up in a steady ramp. The critical shape of this part of the waveform should be a smooth ramp upwards. It can change due to demands on the engine. The spike is where the coil discharges and the spark jumps from one electrode to the other. The spike changes depending on the resistance between the electrodes. The resistance depends on what is going on inside the combustion chamber. Imagine the air and the fuel inside the combustion chamber as ohm resistors between the spark plug electrodes. If you increase the distance between the electrodes, you are increasing the amount of air between the electrodes and the value of the resistor between them. As cylinder pressure increases and the fuel mixture changes, the amount of energy required to fire the plugs also increases. This is why the spike should increase in height if you snap the throttle. If the spark line does not increase when the throttle is snapped, or it is lower when compared to the other coils, it is a sign that the spark might be escaping to areas other than the spark plug electrodes. There are not specifications for the spike, but it should look like a single line on most scopes. After the spike has dropped, you should see small decreasing oscillations. The key with the spike is to compare it to the other coils on the vehicle. If one spike goes higher than the rest, it is a sign of two things. First, the resistance in the combustion chamber could be different than the rest of the cylinders, or the spark plug or coil could be damaged. 
If the spike is significantly lower than the rest of the cylinders, it is a sign that the resistance is lower in that plug or the cylinder. In some cases, a clogged or dead fuel injector can cause a lower spike when the throttle is snapped. The spark line is the burn time of the spark between the two electrodes. It will typically last two to three milliseconds at idle. The perfect burn line should be a constant decreasing slope at idle. The line can have small changes and can appear jagged on some scopes. This has been theorized as changes in the gases and turbulence inside the cylinder. At the end of the burn line is the coil oscillations. This is the energy left over in the coil. It should have three or four smooth humps. If it has a spike and a short burn time, it is a sign that there is an open in the wire or the boot preventing the energy from going to the plug. On modern coil over plug, wasted spark, or coil near plug systems, you are using the secondary waveform as a comparative tool. You can compare a waveform to a known good pattern from a database, or you can compare the waveform to the other cylinders. The waveforms will differ from one engine to the next. On some systems, you may see a 1 to 2 kilovolt hump after the spike, or you might not see a coil oscillation when the primary coil is energized. This could be normal for some systems. The secret is to compare the waveform with the other cylinders, or you can find a known good waveform pattern posted in an online forum. Thanks for watching.